Hey shooters, Jesse Tischauser here, Optics Planet Gear Expert. I'm going to do a quick tutorial for you today on how to properly tune an adjustable gas block on your AR-15 rifle. What you'll need to accomplish this task is a box of ammunition, depending on the model of a gas block that you have, some blue Loctite, the appropriate Allen wrenches or tools to adjust the gas block, and then at least one magazine. I have several magazines here, uh, each loaded with one round of ammunition. I, I'm using multiple magazines just to make it quicker for me to shoot all these rounds on video. So what you're going to do first is adjust the gas block, open one complete turn. Then you load one round of ammunition in the rifle and shoot it. What you're looking for here to make sure that the gun is cycling completely as you're opening up the gas port on the adjustable gas block is that the gun is cycling completely. The way we know it's cycling completely is it locks the bolt back to the rear every time. What I'm anticipating here is there's not enough gas to completely cycle the rifle, so the, either the round won't eject or it definitely won't lock back. I'm going to continue to repeat this process as I open the gas block one turn at a time. So here we go with the first round. Like I said, it did not lock the bolt to the rear on the magazine catch. It did eject the shell, or the uh, spent casing. Sometimes it won't eject that, which tells you you've got to open the gas block a little bit more. So next we'll go one more turn on the gas block, open, and repeat the process, firing one round. That time it locked the bolt to the rear, which means we're close at two, two turns. That's pretty good. Let's try it again. That worked as well. Typically it takes more than this, uh, especially if you're using soft ammunition like this Freedom Munition stuff. Happened again. So once you get the gas block tuned to the point where the bolt carrier is locking to the rear at the last round on each magazine, that means you have enough gas. At that point, we'll give it an additional half to one turn. Depending on where you live, the colder temperatures typically get le a lesser burn rate from the powder, so you'll need more gas, especially if the temperatures drop below about 50, 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So I typically shoot night matches with this rifle, so I'm going to give it a one full turn extra and call it good. Test it one more time with a few more rounds. There you have it. Now what we'll do on this particular Seekins gas block that I'm using, it does not require the blue Loctite. It has its own set screw in the rear made out of brass. What you do is you tighten that set screw and it butts up against the adjustable gas set screw, keeping things in place. Now if you have uh, one of Optics Planet's JP Enterprises or some of the other gas blocks they carry that don't have that set screw, what you'll do is completely screw the adjustment screw back all the way in, counting the number of rotations that it's taken you to get to the bottom. Once you have that number, write it down because you'll forget it. Then you unscrew it completely, apply a little bit of blue Loctite to the screw, screw it all the way back in, and then back it back out the number of turns that you wrote down previously. There you have it folks, how to properly tune an adjustable gas block from Jesse Tischauser, Optics Planet Gear Expert.